Today, let's create a winter capsule wardrobe for a true winter with a flamboyant natural body type. Actually, today I'd like to show you my own capsule wardrobe. Of course, I'll continue to share a variety of capsule wardrobe examples here because I know that you find them useful and I want to emphasize the fact that a capsule wardrobe can be created to suit absolutely anyone's personal style. However, I'd like to share a little bit more about my own capsule wardrobe because I think it will be a great case study for you to see over time how I transition my wardrobe between seasons and how I execute my personal style on a day-to-day -day basis. As usual, I'll be focusing on how color and body type factor into the selections for this capsule wardrobe. So whether you resonate with my personal style, my body type, my color type, or just my way of thinking about capsule wardrobes, I hope that you'll find something useful from these examples. So first, let me show you how I create and track my wardrobe color palette. As you might already know, this year we've been diving deep into what I call the 12 competencies of personal style. This past month we talked about color type, and if you join the free course, you will have received this free swatch library. So I thought it would be really fun and useful to give you a little demo on how I use the swatch library to create and track my capsule wardrobe color palette. So here's what the swatch library looks like. I created this in Notion, and if you've joined the free 12 competencies email course, then you will receive a link and instructions to copy this and the rest of the style file to your own Notion account. If you're not familiar with Notion, or if you just don't want to mess around with Notion, that's totally fine. This is a completely optional resource, but it's one that I use a lot and I thought it would be really useful and fun for those of you who choose to try it out. If you haven't joined the course yet, I'll leave a link for you to join in the description box below. As you can see, there is a main view where the swatches are organized by hue. I've also created views for each of the 12 seasonal color types. For example, my color season is True Winter, so we can navigate to the True Winter palette to see all of the swatches included in that palette. There's also a view for my wardrobe. When you receive the swatch library, this section will be mostly blank, but I'll show you how you can add swatches to your palette. Say I'm playing around in my wardrobe and I pull out this green silk top. I can scroll through any palette to find the most similar color, in this case, bottle green. Then I can click on the swatch to open it. Once I've opened my swatch, I can see all of the properties associated with it. Then we have a palette field. This is where I can add this color to one of my color palettes by selecting an existing palette or entering the name of a new palette in this field and hitting enter. So I'll select my wardrobe to add this color to my overall color palette. Looking at my overall color palette, you can see that I have a mix of colors that aren't all specifically within the true winter color season. But most of my colors fall within the winter or summer color seasons, which makes sense for me since true winter's sister season is true summer. Plus, I always think it's good to include a little bit of variety. However, you can see that the palette is overall cool, medium to bright in chroma, and medium to dark in value, with a few very light colors for contrast, specifically white and a very light but saturated denim color. The one color that I have in my palette that's warm is this warm medium brown, which coincidentally matches with my warm brown eyes, probably why it works okay for me. The moral of the story is, don't stress too much about including colors only from your specific color season. Start with what you actually wear and slowly tailor your color palette over time. This winter, my neutrals include shades of white, gray, black, dark brown, and light denim. I've really been enjoying including more brown and dark gray in my wardrobe. Since I'm a true winter, black looks good on me, but deep and cool browns and grays are even better. For my statement colors, my palette includes bottle green, dark teal, medium blues, a slightly muted navy, and cool reds. I hope you guys can see how useful this Notion template is for creating your capsule wardrobe color palette. And like I said, you can get it for free by joining the course. That being said, let's start building this winter capsule wardrobe. As usual, I'll highlight a few interesting pieces from each category, 
so that we can talk about how these pieces work in terms of color and body type. Essentials. If I were starting my wardrobe from scratch, one of the first things that I would purchase is a blue striped button-up shirt. It can be dressed up or down, works year-round, and instantly makes an outfit look more stylish. I love the mica shirt from Anina Bing. This particular version has a soft, lightweight cotton that drapes nicely, a slightly oversized silhouette with a drop shoulder, an almost Peter Pan collar, and intentionally shrunken sleeves, which give it a really interesting shape. But you definitely don't have to splurge on a button-up shirt. I often thrift blue striped shirts from the men's section as well. I also have the same shirt in white. However, the fabric is much thicker and stiffer than the blue striped one, so I find it just a little Little less wearable for me. But I love the interesting design details and the relaxed silhouette is great for the flamboyant natural body type, so I still consider this an essential in my wardrobe. I added one new essential top to my wardrobe this season, and that's this dark grey mock neck top from the line by K. As I mentioned earlier, dark greys are a bit more flattering than black for me as a true winter. So I've been looking for ways to add more charcoal grays like this into my wardrobe. I've also been loving wide leg bottoms, so a slimmer top is a great way to balance out those proportions. I was really pleasantly surprised that this mock neck worked so well on me since I'm usually not a huge fan of turtlenecks. I know that a lot of other natural types feel the same, so I'm very pleased to have found a new neckline option to put on rotation. Plus, the asymmetrical stitching on the front creates subtle visual interest, allowing it to function as a basic without being boring at all. Along similar lines, slim fitting crew neck tops are an essential in my wardrobe and great for layering in the winter. This Henley from Everlane is a great option. Other essential layering pieces include the white t-shirt and white tank. Here, I have an oversized tee and an asymmetrical tank, both of which are great for the flamboyant natural body type. This black cotton sweater from Everlane is also on heavy rotation in my wardrobe. I personally prefer my essential sweaters to be cotton because I live in South Carolina and the wool is often too warm. I also included this black and white striped tee. The stripes are just a nice option for something different than a solid white or black t-shirt. And the contrasting collar is a little sporty and a little edgy. I think it's important to have some essentials that are really versatile while also having a stylistic point of view. When you have essentials that are a bit interesting and different, even simple outfits can look really stylish. Finally, the relaxed silk shirt we talked about earlier. This one is from Equipment and suits my color type perfectly, although teal colors like this are actually the most universally flattering color and would work well for almost any color type. These silk shirts are really pricey if you buy them new, but if you find one that suits you well, they're super easy to find secondhand. I purchased this one on Poshmark for $20 and I've collected quite a few other colors by shopping secondhand. It's a great way of injecting color into my wardrobe in a really low risk way. Moving on to bottoms, my essential bottoms have been absolutely taken over by a Goldie this year. The A Goldie leaf skirt has really opened up a lot of new styling options in my wardrobe and has made me realize that I love long and relaxed skirts, which actually really makes sense given my flamboyant natural body type. I take my normal size in A Goldie and I love how the fit allows this skirt to be worn low-waisted or belted at the waist for a more high-waisted look. A low rise works really well for the flamboyant natural, and it's a proportion that I've been really loving lately. Not super low rise, but I've been enjoying wearing my waistlines across the top half of my hips rather than at the waist. I find it a lot more comfortable, and I don't mind creating a horizontal line at my hips. Since my hips are quite narrow in comparison to my shoulders, creating a horizontal line at the hips actually has a balancing effect. A low rise combined with a relaxed fit also helps to create a straighter line from my hips to the floor, which is a nice silhouette for the flamboyant natural body type. Another A Goldie favorite is the low slung baggy jeans. I love them so much that I have them in three colors, which is kind of embarrassing to admit. Similar to the skirt, the long rise on these jeans allows them to be worn low on the hips as intended or belted for a higher waist. Even though I'm only 5'4", I chose the longer length so that I can wear them high-waisted with heels or low-waisted and cuffed with flats. Maybe someday I'll want to tailor them, but for now I've been really loving wearing them cuffed with ballet flats for a casual workwear look. 
and a pair of straight leg black trousers is an essential for more formal occasions. I also chose two essential blazers, the Frankie Shop B blazer in gray and the Tibby Liam blazer in brown. Both are a bit oversized, although the brown one is less exaggerated. And these are great true winter neutrals that go with everything in my color palette. Seasonals. Okay, now that you've seen my essentials, let's quickly look at my winter 2024 seasonals. For tops, this cocoa brown cashmere sweater from Lily Silk is a favorite. This video is not sponsored, but I did receive this sweater from Lily Silk as part of a different collaboration with them. However, I've been wearing it a ton, and I very highly recommend Lily Silk for their cashmere. The quality is amazing. Next, a shrunken denim shirt from A Goldie. This almost made it into my essentials, but living in South Carolina, a black shirt in a heavier fabric like denim might not work very well for me all year round. Maybe I'll prove myself wrong this summer, in which case this might graduate into my essentials for next year. For bottoms, I have another pair of low-waisted denim from A Goldie. I really love these. Light denim is not something I reach for a ton in my wardrobe, and the short rise is a bit trendy, so I'm not sure how quickly I might tire of them. However, I'm loving them right now, so they definitely deserve a spot in this capsule. I did include one dress in my winter seasonals. Finally, I've added four jackets and coats. A black bomber jacket, a gray cropped wool jacket, a black oversized leather jacket, and a gray classic wrap coat. Although these are all similar in color, they vary in shape, length, and texture, which provides tons of flexibility when choosing my outerwear. Statements. Finally, we have statements, which really don't have to make sense at all. They're just things that you want to wear right now. You may have seen this red top before because I've included it in my capsules for many years now. Another statement top is this one shoulder velvet bodysuit from A Goldie. A bit more casual is this white polo shirt with shoulder pads from Paper Moon. You may think that the shoulder pads would be bad for flamboyant naturals because they accentuate the shoulders, but actually they can be very flattering because the strong shoulder resonates with their natural bone structure. Even more casual, I've included this oversized polo shirt from Nike and a bright blue sweater from Anita Bing, and a slightly cropped but relaxed red leather jacket from Ana Pelli. I'm also super excited to start wearing this skirt from The Line by K. It has a short tube skirt layered over a slitted A-line skirt made of a crinkly fabric, which is super interesting and allows me to wear something that kinda looks like a mini skirt while getting all the coverage of a midi skirt. Finally, let me show you my shoes and accessories. For shoes, a pair of cowboy boots can really function as an essential where I live. I love to wear mine with long skirts for extra coverage and visual interest. I've also included black and silver ankle boots. The black ones are great for every day, while the silver ones are a bit more statement. If you love to wear a certain kind of shoe, I really recommend including a darker pair and a lighter pair to open up your styling options. This allows you to create contrast or elongation with both light and dark bottoms. Perhaps an unexpected shoe for a winter capsule, a two-strap sandal is an essential for me year-round. During the winter, it can be worn with a sock to create a really interesting look. For flats, of course, a sneaker, a loafer, and a ballet flat are all great options. I still have my Adidas Sambas, but I will say the one sneaker that I never get tired of is a Vans Old School. And finally, this pair of shiny red boots is definitely a statement. However, they're quite versatile since they're tight to the calf, allowing them to be worn under skirts or pants. I chose three bags, a white belt bag that can be worn crossbody, a red and white beaded shoulder bag that's more of a statement, and a classic black leather bag. And finally for accessories, a black belt, a white belt, my prescription glasses, which are also transition lenses, so they function as sunglasses as well, and I'll link the frames in the description box below, a brown ball cap, some chunky silver hoops, and a pair of statement socks. The final capsule includes 17 tops, eight bottoms, one dress, seven jackets, seven shoes, three bags, and six accessories, which can create at least 200 interchangeable outfits.
hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it inspires you to join the course and start building your own dream wardrobe. If you'd like to learn more about the 12 competencies of personal style, I highly recommend you check out this playlist next. If you genuinely liked this video or found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe for more personal style and capsule wardrobe videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.